today I'm talking to Steve Schwartz from LSAT Unplugged. He reached out to me and we had a really great conversation. And um, we're going to talk about the LSAT Flex now, which I know very little about, but I think Steve knows more than me. So how do you want to start this off, Steve? Yeah, sure, Victoria. So thanks for the great conversation. I'm glad to chat with you and share more about the Flex. It is new, so it's not surprising that you might not know too much about it. I know you took the LSAT more traditionally in the process of your process of your own applications, but I also understand that many people watching your YouTube channel are in the process of currently studying for the LSAT. And during these unique times in 2020, the pandemic, the LSAT is online in the digital format, specifically the online Flex format. And as you, we were saying earlier, that's kind of weird because you have proc it's online proctoring. They're watching you as you take it. So I got the sense from you that you might not want to have taken it in that format. No, I hate online proctored exams. I haven't had to use one yet. I know there are some classes at my university and other programs that do, but it just is so weird to me. The idea that like, I've heard some of them, they make you like pan the room, which kind of to me seems like a bit of a privacy concern. Um, and it, it also seems to be frank, like, very easy to cheat, which I obviously don't agree with. So what do you think about that? Well, yeah, I mean, I think that it's not ideal for a number of reasons. As you said, there's privacy concerns, both with regard to what they're seeing in your room, as well as them, like you, you have to install things on your computer for it as well. So that's not ideal. The cheating, I'm not nearly as concerned about. People do bring that up a lot, but I'm still wondering, like, how exactly would you cheat? Because You've got, you've got the strict timing there. There's only so much you can do within 35 minutes, and it's not like there's anything to, any notes to consult that would really be a ba major game changer. So how, how do you think about that? Well, I guess when I was saying that, I was thinking more specifically about like traditional classes at university, which, yeah, there are ways to do it. I'm, I don't really know, but I'm sure like some savvy person can figure it out. I, that's true, though. With the LSAT, it is really hard to cheat because it's kind of just a skill test. So, I mean, if you don't have the skill, you're kind of screwed. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's just really weird. I also don't really understand another thing about it is that it's a shorter exam and you're not allowed to, with the online proctor, you know, talk out loud or let your eyes leave the screen. I don't know. It just seems really bizarre. And I feel like it would be stressful to take an exam under those bizarre circumstances unless you're used to that. Yeah. Well, tr anytime, you know, of a transition is, feels kind of weird. If you've been doing online proctored exams your whole life, then by the time you got to the flex for law school admissions, it might seem pretty routine by that point. So I think part of this is just because it's new. At the same time though, I get the privacy thing. I would say for the privacy thing, clear out your room or take it in a different room where you don't have any particular personal objects that you wouldn't want a total stranger seeing. So put those aside, put those away, or just go into a different room. Seems like the most straightforward yeah. thing to me. Yeah, for sure. Um, like there are definitely ways around it. It's just kind of like, I don't know, I guess the whole year, the whole theme of this year is that everything is very unfair. And it's very unfair, I think, for people to have to do this without, I, I don't know, I guess maybe there might be a way to test run it beforehand. But I certainly my whole method was about replicating exam conditions, doing it over and over to be as used to what it would be like on test day as possible. And I know there are way bigger problems in the world than people having to take the LSAT under slightly different conditions than what they expected. Um, but at the same time, it is kind of an important exam. And for a lot of people, it's kind of like one of the, the turning points for their, their career, essentially. So I don't know, it just seems kind of unfair that people have to endure that anyway. Like I said, bigger problems in the world, totally understand that. But in the context of what we're talking about, it kind of sucks. Yeah, it does suck for a lot of people. Some people like it, some people don't like it question is, what's the alternative? I think administering it in person probably isn't a great idea given COVID. It's not the most essential thing. And if people would get COVID as a result of it, doesn't really seem worth it to me in my view. So the question is, what do you do next? Well, you either not have an LSAT period or you do it online. I think if you were to mail physical booklets to people and have them mail it back, you'd have way more cheating concerns mm -hmm. there. So this is really, I think nobody really wanted this, especially LSAC but they rolled it out pretty quickly because people do want to take the LSAT. They do want to apply. And I think some of the logistical things involved make it make more sense than shipping tablets all over the world to have people do it at in-person testing centers, even with social distancing. I just think it isn't feasible. 
And then as for three sections versus five, I do think with a long enough timeline, they'll change that. This is just what they're doing as a stopgap short-term measure to get something going. But they are going to need to add a more, another section to do experimentals at yeah. some point if this continues. So that was another thing I was kind of wondering about because it's three sections. Well, first of all, I'm not really sure why they made it three, but... Bathroom breaks. They didn't want to do bathroom breaks. Oh, okay. I see. So yeah, anyway, that was another thing I was thinking about though was like the experimental. It's gone. They just, <laughs> I did not like the experimental. So I mean, that's a plus. Yeah, no, I mean, nobody wants to be an unpaid guinea pig for LSAC. It's not really viewed as the most charitable organization to be supporting with your 35 minutes and your stress. But they've got to test out future questions in some way. That's the best way they've come up with. And this is unfortunately a kind of an industry standard. I know that other exams have done experimentals as well to test out those questions. But for now, they're just reusing old tests that are, were previously undisclosed. But at some point, if the flex continues long enough, I think they're going to have to get over their fear of the bathroom break. As we said, not too much people could do to cheat then anyway. And that way they will at least be able to test out future questions to be developing new material for the future so that you don't have too much reuse because reuse becomes a problem if people run into the same questions too much. Were you able to tell on your exam which one was the experimental? No, no. The, que <laughs> the questions aren't super crazy. That's not what the experimental is. They're, what they're really looking to do more so is calibrate the difficulty of the section as a whole. And then if there's a question that's minorly off in some really subtle way and people don't perform as expected on it, like let's say a lot of top scorers got a question wrong, that might mean it's a bad question because top scorers generally have a pretty good idea of what the exam is looking to do. So that's what they're looking to figure out there. I only asked because, so my cousin and I, we both took the LSAT, but I only found out after I took mine, so it was really not helpful to me. Um, but he guessed on which one was the experimental, and he guessed wrong. Ooh. Um, but I also guessed, and I guessed right. So, it's a risky game, as you see. Well, yeah, but I mean, for me, I did so many exams that for my particular exam, which again, not the case for every exam, which I understand, but I just felt like this is way too hard. Like it's, it's so much harder than every other exam that I've taken of this section in recent times. So yeah, but I would also say don't follow that advice because you could be wrong. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to encourage it. It's possible that maybe some people would see it, but I think most who guessed could guess wrong or wouldn't be guessing with sufficient data, especially with the stress of knowing it's the real thing. It could be tough to evaluate it in a more general sense. So I'd say, take it seriously. Don't mess around. And for now, at least there's no experimental anyway. So there's not, you're not going to mm -hmm. encounter that on a flex for in the short term, at least. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it would be better for some people to just like take it in the comfort of your own home. I know for me, I spent like, so much of the morning of my LSAT avoiding people that I knew who I would, I would just watch them go in and I'd be like, okay, I don't want anyone knowing I'm taking this test. <laughs> so yeah. And I looked like, I looked not great when I took the LSAT because I was like, I want to be comfortable and wake up late and stuff. So yeah, but you definitely I definitely dress yeah. for comfort. Yeah. But I mean, it's just, um, it's just a temporary thing, fingers crossed. So you know, maybe we'll just end up, uh, maybe all of this will end up being irrelevant soon, which would be best actually. Yeah. Well, you raised an interesting point about like the in-person administration at a testing center with other people around versus the comfort of your own home. And I think aside from the weirdness of having an online proctor who can see you, but you can't see them at the same time, you're at home, you're not going anywhere, no commuting issues, no worrying about getting there no worrying about the other people seeing you or just kind of absorbing their stress. And then no proctors physically walking around either. So assuming you've got a good internet connection and a quiet home environment and it's three sections, you're done in two hours. I think that's fantastic if those are givens. But alternatively, you might not like the weirdness of the proctor and you might be fine with going to a testing center under at least normal circumstances. So we'll see. But I expect actually that Although the pandemic will hopefully end soon, the flex I'm thinking actually might might be here to stay. Because really? yeah, because it's logistically, I think it's easier for LSAC because they're not 
booking all these testing centers around the world. They're not hiring these temporary proctors themselves. They don't have to ship the tablets. Previously, it was test booklets. So you don't have to eat the equipment issues or physical shipping of anything, really. All they've got to do is pay Proctor U, and Proctor U takes care of all that stuff, and nobody has to go anywhere. There are exceptions for things like certain accommodated administrations where they might have people do it at a local college or law school, but for the most part, I think it's going to be flex. And with every flex administration, they get better at doing it. There's less confusion over the rules on the part of the proctors. Test takers get more used to it too. And we, at this point, we've already got the June and July flex administrations complete. August will be flex. I think it's pretty likely that, pretty likely that October and November will be flex also. And then next year, I mean, who knows? But this COVID thing does seem to be dragging on quite a while. So I, I, as much as I would like for it to be over, I think that at the very least, the flex will continue. Yeah, we'll I mean, yeah, and this, this like, we could go into so much about how it's changed the legal landscape and just people's careers and their work-life balance, but I think, yeah, that that's that's really interesting. I guess I didn't consider that, but yeah, it's true that it could just, it is easier, and the longer that it goes on, I think people will just be more accepting of it. Like, the reason I just balk at it is because, obviously, I haven't had to take an exam like that, so it seems very weird and foreign to me, but over time, I mean, people thought erasers were weird at one point, like pencil erasers. And so, and we got over that, but yeah, thank you so much for your insight. And uh, it's been great talking to you. Of course, Victoria, thanks for having me. And for anyone who's interested in more on the flex or LSAT prep in general, again, I'm Steve Schwartz. I run the LSAT blog. I also host the LSAT Unplugged YouTube channel and podcast, and I've been tracking the flex very closely over the past several months. So I've got tons of resources, including a flex FAQ as well as a flex specific playlist. And so Victoria, I'll send you all the links if you want to include those for folks. Yeah, sounds great. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.